Facts about Samson that many people do not know. Number 1. His sacred vow was more than just his hair. During the period of Samson, God raised up heroes within his people to deliver them from their enemies. Israel's most formidable enemy then was the Philistines, whom God had used to oppress Israel because of their evil deeds. Samson was born to begin delivering Israel from the hand of the Philistines. As a Nazarite, Samson actually had three rules that he could not break. According to the Old Testament, a Nazarite is a person who vows to dedicate their life entirely to God. Samson was a Nazarite even before he was born. He wasn't just dedicated. He was chosen to be a Nazarite for God's purpose. Samson had to uphold the three tenets as a Nazarite. He was unable to touch the dead. He could not cut his hair. He could not drink wine or touch grapes. The implications of this vow were so deep that his mother was asked to follow the sacred traditions before he was born. Judges chapter 13 verses 2 to 5 And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was infertile and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are infertile and have no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Therefore be careful not to drink wine or any other intoxicating drink, and do not eat anything ceremonially unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from birth, and he shall begin to rescue Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Number 2. His Unique and Rare Name Samson's name literally translates to sunshine, and he is the only man to be called this in the Bible. Number 3. Samson was not the only individual in the Old Testament to follow the Nazarite vow. While the Nazarite vow was generally done by the individual by his own choice, there are three people in the Bible, two from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament, whose parents dedicated them to the service of God. Samuel and Samson, both of whom appear in the Old Testament, as well as John the Baptist, who appears in the New Testament, took the Nazarite vow at birth. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11 she made a vow, saying, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction suffering of your maidservant and remember, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. A razor shall never touch his head. Luke chapter 1 verses 13 to 17 But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, because your petition in prayer was heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have great joy and delight, and many will rejoice over his birth, for he will be great and distinguished in the sight of the Lord, and will never drink wine or liquor, and he will be filled with and empowered to act by the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. He will turn many of the sons of Israel back from sin to love and serve the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, which is to seek and submit to the will of God in order to make ready a people perfectly prepared spiritually and morally for the Lord. Although the Nazarite vow is an Old Testament concept, it has a New Testament counterpart. In Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, Paul states, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. 
Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The ancient Nazarite vow represents the need for Christians to be separate from this world, a holy people dedicated to God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 For He delivered us and saved us, and called us with a holy calling, a calling that leads to a consecrated life, a life set apart, a life of purpose, not because of our works or because of any personal merit. We could do nothing to earn this, but because of His own purpose and grace, His amazing, undeserved favor, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus before the world began, eternal, ages ago. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. Number 4. His mother was visited by an angel before his birth. Samson's mother was barren before she had him. In the ancient world, childlessness was considered one of the worst things that could happen to a couple. Samson's mother was a very righteous and upright woman. However, this did not shield her from being treated poorly for being a barren woman. But the Lord had other plans for them, as she would go on to give birth to one of the most noteworthy characters of the Bible. Judges chapter 13 verse 2 And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was infertile and had no children. Judges chapter 13 verse 3 And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are infertile and have no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. This was the turning point of their lives. From this moment on, they would continue to play key roles in God's plan to free His people. Because births to barren women were unusual, the birth often being divinely announced ahead of time. Number 5. The angel that announced Samson visited two times. Abraham and Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, were told that their barren wives would conceive. However, the annunciation of Samson did not come to his father, Manoah, but to his mother. Just like Zechariah, Manoah doubted, and Manoah prayed for an additional visit of the man of God. And when the request was granted, he asked for instructions regarding the nurture of the promised son, which had already been given to his wife. Judges chapter 13 verses 8 to 14 Then Manoah pleaded with the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us, and teach us what we are to do for the boy who is to be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So the woman ran quickly and told her husband, Behold, the man who came to me the other day has appeared to me. Then Manoah got up and followed his wife, and came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? He said, I am. And Manoah said, now when your words come true, what shall be the boy's manner of life and his vocation? The angel of the Lord said to Manoah, The woman must pay attention to everything that I said to her. She may not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor drink wine or any other intoxicating drink, nor eat anything ceremonially unclean. She shall observe everything that I commanded her.